free introduction on the Tharanta ramp, Dresden to Chemnitz, or Chemnitz, sorry. That's a really nice capture. <laughs> Can't say that enough. Welcome to driver training. Today you'll be taken through the operation of a BR143 electric locomotive in DB traffic red livery. During this brief introduction, we will go through the critical driving controls and passenger operations. When you're ready, climb aboard to get started. Looks like those are terminating platforms over there. We'll need to turn the loco on. Head to the control panel. Oh, yeah, sorry, sorry. Brain fart. <coughs> to activate the control desk, the back. This locomotive is powered by a pantograph that draws power from the overhead lines. Set Take a seat in the driver's position. This is where you'll be spending most of your time. The headlights will need to be set to let others know that this locomotive is operational. So wait for the system to charge. Chimneys. Oh, what's that goes. Now activate the pantograph so that it raises up and makes contact with the overhead. Close the circuit. Take a quick glance at the platform to ensure all is safe before unlocking the doors. Bloody hell, that was a strange few minutes. Huh. It's time to get going. Set the doors to locked. Cool. Set that. Forward. The brakes will need to be released on the train. Hmm. 
Oops. The force selector determines how much tractive effort force is being supplied to the train. The speed selector allows the driver to easily amend the speed of the locomotive as required. Once the desired speed is set, indicated by the red needle on the speedometer, the locomotive will automatically adjust to meet that speed. That's a pretty fine system actually, I do quite like that. Excuse me. You're now approaching the first stop. Use the speed selector to reduce your speed, and you can use the train brake to provide additional braking force. Definitely went a bit too heavy on that. Well, it fit the whole train in, so not too bad, not done too badly there. Proceed to the next stop unguided this time and see how you get on. An emergency brake test will occur during the journey. Fuck. 
job to start. Pass on another similar train. Excuse me. Got to pull up to a speed limit going that speed, not over. Stop soon as well. We'll now test the emergency brake and go over the critical steps needed to recover the train. Okay. To begin, set the train brake to emergency and then wait for the train to come to a complete stop. Brakes are still applied and will need to be released. Move the train brake to running. Finally, set the speed selector to the indicated speed to get the train moving again. Now we're pulling up to 100. No one. Nice work. We can now continue the journey. the visa
It's gonna be close, but I think I did get it all in still. Good work. That concludes all the basics of operating this locomotive. Yep, whole thing's in. Sweet as a nut. Might play a bit Fortnite after this. Welcome. Welcome to the stream. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Just need a Shemnitz introduction. Let's do it. Excuse me. Welcome to Trains in World 2, an immersive and highly detailed rail simulation it's free mate. authentic routes and trains from around the world. You've just been awarded some action points. These are displayed in the top right corner of the screen and count towards your overall experience. This is one of many interactives to be discovered, but not all of them will be as easy to find as this one. Can't even see it, our kid. A lot of time will be spent on. You can pause the experience at any point and review previous and current objectives. Check it out now and then return to the game when ready. Just pause it, then unpause it. This is the speed display. The white needle shows current speed. The red marker indicates the maximum permitted speed. This is the direction display. An arrow will indicate forward, reverse, and neutral directions. This is the power display. A number will indicate what position the power control is in. These are brake indicators. They show the state of the various brake systems, allowing independent management of them. In the top right are the signal and speed limit displays. These feature an indication of what is approaching and a countdown distance to when they will come into effect. Some of these displays can be hidden via the settings menu for a more challenging experience. This train is ready to go. Push the indicated handle forwards to get moving. The Dresden to Chemnitz Main Line runs for roughly Chemnitz. 80 kilometers ah. and runs both express and mainline passenger services as well as a variety of freight from the local industries. It's 
so much turbo stuff. Have I literally got to wait for it to reach 100 or 30 miles an hour? Sorry. Sixty even. Oh man. It's gonna be long. Oh no. Trains in World Two allow. Got to be the only single deck train Germany has. Everything's double deck right now. You've only explored a small area here, so let's take a look at what else there is to enjoy. Welcome to Saxony, located in eastern Germany. Lean into yesteryear and experience the challenge of unique tilting diesel traction. Power out of Dresden, tackle steep gradients bordered by forest tilting and drive through the picturesque traction. valleys. Along the way, be sure to place route maps, paint garden gnomes, restock the first aid points and put up tourist posters. Choose commuter, express or freight traffic. You pick the pace. This is Tarandaramp, Dresden to Chemnitz. Tarandaramp. Duran Duran. Dresden to Chemnitz. My next opponent, I show speed suey. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Welcome to driver training. Today you'll be taken through the operation of a BR612 diesel multiple unit what do you in want? DB traffic red livery. During this brief introduction, we'll go through the critical driving controls and passenger operations. When you're ready, climb aboard to get started.
Take a seat in the driver's position. This is where you'll be spending most of your time. Yeah, now I can drive this service. Non Firstly, we need to act... This DMU is powered by two Cummins QSK-19 diesel hydraulic engines, producing 750 horsepower each. The engines need to be started individually and are designated Engine 1 and Engine 2. When multiple units are connected, their engines are grouped by these designations. To start Engine 1, hold the Engine 1 start switch in the start position. Hmm. Repeat this for Engine 2. Come on. To enable hydraulic transmission, switch the power switch to on. Set the brake. The reverser determines Take a quick glance of the platform to ensure all is safe before unlocking the doors. It's time to get going. Set the doors to locked. The combined power brake handle allows you to control acceleration and braking. To apply power, hold it in the forward position. The handle allows you to apply a specific amount of power. Once you have reached the power you require, letting go will allow it to move back to the hold position. That's kind of mad. Coasting is a method used to efficiently maintain. Keeping to speed limits is important. If you begin over speeding, apply a small amount of brake by moving the combined power handle into braking and apply braking force in a similar way to applying engine power. This is exactly like a 170 or something. The humming.
going so fit behind speed. Seven to whip switch and go by. Still zipping around all these corners, eh? Now approaching the first stop, apply a small amount of brake force using the combined power handle to achieve a comfortable and safe stop.
Proceed to the next stop unguided this time and see how you get on. An emergency brake test will occur during the journey. Yeah, these are only short trains, so yeah, the power compliance ain't too bad. Excuse me.
We will now test the emergency brake and go over the critical steps needed to recover the train. Good brakes on all these German trains. Now that the train has come to a stop, we need to recover it so that we can continue our journey. So release all the brakes. Yep. We can now continue our journey. That was weird. Solid minute of going downhill. <laughs> Good work. That concludes all the basics of operating this train. Cool. Already done the BR143. Excuse me. the trains your collection that is both of the yeah it's both the training sessions done for them br143 done at 766.2 br401 br403 Cool. Right, so actually I've got that much more to do. So do that.
Mariners extend Castillo to a five year contract through 2028. Well, Blue Jays lineup's been submitted. Only going to Fakenham, Norfolk, Portsmouth. So there's a couple going far. There's only one only going across the way. I must say, I am really enjoying this route so far. Welcome to driver training. Today you'll be taken through Excuse the operation me. of this DBBR 766.2. During this brief introduction, we'll go through the critical driving controls and passenger operations. When you're ready, climb aboard to get started. Sorry guys, I'm having too much fun with this. Set the battery switch to the on oh, that's position. All. Take a seat in the drop. Oh my god. Now activate the pantograph so that it raises up and makes contact with the overhead catenary.
set the brake key to activate the train brake. Oh, starting to get some lag. The reverser determines the direction of travel. This train is now ready to depart. During the course of your journey, ensure that you're monitoring your speed and the amount of power that is applied. If too much power is applied from this control car, then this could cause the traction motors of the rear locomotive to cut out and prevent further power from being applied. Coasting is a method used to efficiently maintain speed. to speed limit is important. If you begin over speeding, apply a small amount of brake by moving the train brake. Welcome to the stream. A little bit of a push there. Go, oh, calm down. Forty all the way into Dresden Plow. Train stable there. I think this would be a pretty cool line to do on foot, like drive some of the trains out from there and stuff. I should pay attention as well though, because I've got a station coming up. Bloody belching tonight, sorry. You're now approaching the first stop. Apply a small amount of brake force using the train brake to achieve a comfortable and safe stop.
Take a quick glance of the platform to ensure all is safe before unlocking the doors. It's time to get going. Set the doors to locked. We will now cover traction locking and how to recover the train. A traction lock can come into effect in several different ways. If power is applied whilst the brakes are still applied, a traction lock will be engaged. Another instance of where this happens is if power is applied whilst the passenger doors are open. The traction lock has now been triggered. This is represented on the HUD by a red outline on the power display. Finally, we need to make sure that the train brake is set to the running position. Nice job, the traction lock has now been disengaged and we're now able to continue the journey. Proceed to the next stop unguided this time and see how you get on.
Okay. So what we'll do is just pull in here. Might play a bit of Fortnite. Start a whole new stream now. Playing a bit of Fortnite. But I might do all these first. I'm debating it. I'll probably do all these first. Then we'll move on to scenarios. All that a little later on. Good work. That concludes all of the basics of operating this train. Too much fun trolling on Snapchat at the minute.
Welcome to Würzburg Hauptbahnhof, located in Bavaria, Germany. This region is renowned for its mountains, forests, lakes, and many ornate castles. There's a missing route map over there. Let's fix it while you're here. There are more tasks to discover. Be sure to apply missing route maps, restock first aid points, bag up gravel, and update tunnel length sites. Your train has arrived, so let's climb aboard. This route runs for over 185 kilometers between the cities of Kassel and Würzburg on the Hanover to Würzburg High Speed Railway, Germany's first high speed railway line. Construction on the Hanover to Würzburg line started in 1973 and was opened fully in 1991 at an estimated cost of over 20 million euros per kilometer. Wow. A big challenge to the construction of this route was the 50 tunnels and 31 viaducts needed on this 185-kilometer stretch between Kassel and Würzburg. Wow. Kassel and This train Würzburg. was the first intercity express train, known as the ICE-1. It consists of two class 401 power cars at either end, and up to 14 intermediate cars. Built by Siemens between 1989 and 1993, the ICE-1 was Germany's first batch-produced high-speed train and is capable of operational speeds of 280 km per hour. Nice. On this route, you will be able to drive the ICE-1 and its more modern successor, the ICE-3, as well as hauling freight in the oh, BR-185.2 locomotive. Experience the thrill of racing through dense, there. forested valleys, flying over awe-inspiring viaducts, and diving into swooping tunnels. Oh, that's some freight, is it? This is Train Sim yeah. World. Schnellfahrstrecke, Kassel, Würzburg. Oh, wow. That's pretty cool. Let's do the LZB. We've done the um, 
I think we've got some semaphores. In this training module, you'll be out on the real railway, and you'll be learning about the LZB safety system. LZB is required on lines that allow for speeds higher than 160 km per hour, as the braking distances are too high for normal signal operation. This train has already been mostly set up for you, but before you depart, you will need to make sure the LZB safety system and AFB speed control system are switched on. The safety switches are in the isolation cap. Enable the AFB speed control system in the left. Okay. Set the AFB to 60 km per hour. As you are already in an LZB area, the train is already showing the U indicator in the cab and on the HUD, which tells you that the train is under active LZB monitoring. There are two primary components to LZB in the cab. The current maximum permitted speed is indicated on the speedometer with a small red triangle and on the HUD by a blue marker. Currently, the maximum permitted speed is 250 km per hour. The distance to the next upcoming change is shown on the left of the speedometer by a yellow bar and a number, which is the number of meters to the change. On the HUD, this is in hundreds of meters, so a reading of 97 means 9,700 meters, or 9.7 kilometers. Below the speedometer, the upcoming maximum permitted speed is displayed. Move the AFB speed selector all the way forward to its maximum 330 km per hour. The LZB distance counter has started going down and the number at the bottom of the speedometer in the cab is zero, which tells you that you're approaching a stop. Hmm. You will soon see the LZB maximum permitted speed begin to drop and the train will automatically begin to slow down to stay within it. It will do this all the way to stopping the train without your intervention. However, you should remain vigilant and apply more braking if you feel it's needed to remain within the maximum permitted speed. Keep an observing eye on the progress of the train. Since the maximum permitted speed is reducing, the automated systems should manage it perfectly, but are not a substitute for the driver in charge. Wow. The G indicator has lit up on the HUD and on the train display. When this is solidly lit, that is telling you that the train must slow down. With the AFB speed control system enabled, this should happen automatically. However, if you choose to drive without AFB, 
This is when you should be slowing down. Once the G-Light starts flashing, you are going too fast and are about to get an emergency brake application. You should brake much stronger if this happens and get back below the maximum permitted speed. Okay, you're about to see a signal with all its lights turned off. This is called a dark signal. Signals go dark Excuse when there is a again. train in the section they protect. With traditional signaling systems, this would show a red and prohibit you from going any further until the other train has moved. But under LZB, you are able to rely on this more advanced system to let you proceed into the occupied block safely, knowing that LZB will direct you to stop as required. This is the main signal showing no lights, related to the previous distance signal that you passed. You are now entering an occupied block and will continue to rely on LZB as it brings you to a stop. As you now come to a stop, keep an eye out for the white board on the right-hand side of the track ahead. It will have a number in it. On this line, LZB works by breaking the large main blocks into much smaller ones and representing those by these white boards on the right. This is an LZB block board. And it's this board that your train is not permitted to pass at the moment. You have come to a stop, and the train ahead has already started moving. So momentarily, LZB will recognize this, and the maximum permitted speed will jump up, and you'll be able to get moving again. The white board with a symbol that looks like an X means this is a distance signal, and is warning you that the next main signal is protecting an occupied block, so both this and the following signal will be dark. Continue to monitor progress as the train comes to a complete stop shortly. Oh. 
Well, this is quite a complex system, actually. LZB, PZB, all that. You are now proceeding along the line into Würzburg. A few kilometers out of Würzburg, you'll need to handle the train into the station. For now, continue to monitor the train as it navigates the different speeds while you follow the train up ahead. You find that funny. <laughs> I was thinking, yeah, you give it to Harry, wouldn't you? No, yeah, it's just an uphill gradient, <laughs> so I thought I was getting stopped by the system, but no. Of that or I found a way to <laughs> permeate the matrix of train. <laughs> graphics on here but really so coming out of tunnels getting the glare it's nice
In a moment, the Ender Light will begin flashing on the HUD and in the cap. Once this happens, you will have 10 seconds to respond to it. You will need to press PZB Release. If you fail to do so in time, the train will begin breaking towards zero. But you can still press PZB Release at any point to regain control of the train. The Ender Light flashing signifies that LZB control will be coming to an end soon. And it is therefore crucial that the driver confirms they will be taking back full control of the train. Once acknowledged, the Ender Light will remain on and solid, confirming that it has been acknowledged and reminding you that LZB will be ending soon. Once LZB actually ends, the light will go out. You do not need to acknowledge the final end of LZB, but your AFB will become inactive until you reset it to zero and then reapply it. As you are leaving LZB control, it becomes important that you begin reading the signals up ahead in more detail. This one has a six below the lights and is telling you that you must be doing less than 60 kilometers per hour by the next signal. Begin slowing as required. The ender light has just gone out completely, which means that you are now completely out of LZB control and back to traditional signaling systems. The U indicator has also gone out, confirming LZB is no longer active, and the B indicator has come on, letting you know it remains ready to come back online later. By now, the train should be going around 60 km per hour, as instructed by the previous signal, and the next one with the 3 at the bottom is instructing you to be down to 30 km per hour by the next signal. This signal with two yellow lights on it tells you that the next signal following it is a red stop signal, so you should prepare to stop. In this case, the stop signal is at the other end of the platform, where you will be stopping anyway. But it is good to be aware of the upcoming signals. Now that you are out of LZB, you should reset the AFB selector lever back to zero. As you are approaching a stop in the station ahead, however, you should not reapply it. Continue into the station using the throttle and brake as required.
Brian Brew Austin. I haven't played this in a little while. This is Wuppertal-Oberbarmen on the Rhein-Ruhr S-Bahn. Take the underpass to platform 6 to catch a train. <laughs> 